Gilmer. Present. Mr. Sears. Present. Chairman also present. All right, we got enough for a quorum. The way we're going to do it, we're gonna, we got about three things on the agenda we need to vote on. As soon as we get done, we're going to go right into the community meeting. But first, we're going to have a prayer by Mr. Wyden, and then we'll have a pledge of allegiance by Mr. Bennett. Our Father in heaven, again today, Lord, it shall we come before you, God. We've come to thank you for another beautiful day, God, that you've given us. Thank you, God, for the strength and the health, Heavenly Father, God, that you've allowed us to have. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the opportunity, Lord, to come together in this meeting today. And I pray, Heavenly Father, to be done in an orderly manner and a way, God, that you can set your approval, God, upon what's been done. And Heavenly Father, I ask you, God, to bless each one, God, that's come this way with the richest of your blessings. Watch over us and care for us, Heavenly Father, and let everything be done, God, in decency and order. And God, we'll be careful to bow our head, and we'll thank you for it, because we'll ask it all in the name of Jesus, and we'll ask it for our sakes. Amen. 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 Amen.
sorry for being out. Can y'all hear me down on that end? Uh, uh, I understand the road is, is needed by everybody. I know that 100%. I've even racked my brain myself to bring my own, even ask the question about bringing my personal equipment and fixing a way up and down, but there's responsibility and liability. If the road's closed, we as the county have got to keep it closed. It's got to be safe for everybody. If we fix it to where it's not up to par and standards, and somebody has a wreck on it, or has a mishap, and gets killed or hurt, it's going to be responsibility of the county. I mean, if we can figure out some kind of solution to work around, I mean, if we had the money, it couldn't have been fixed. That's the problem. We don't have the money to do it, but we're going to get into it and let y'all understand and explain to y'all everything that ever we went through hundreds and hundreds of similar, you know, scenarios that we can, what we do this and do that. Right now, it's that green stuff. We just don't have the funding for nothing. Uh, but we'll be answering questions as soon as Eric, we'll never get started here a little bit. Appreciate y'all coming out. All right, we're fixing to get started in the community park. Uh, what, I, what we need to do is we got a really big crowd, and I'm, I'm proud. This is my hometown, so I'm proud that this many people has come out uh, to, to show support for, for our county and for something that needs to be done. So I appreciate everybody coming. But with so many people, we need to live it. Uh, you know, if you want to talk, just limit it to three to four or five minutes. So that way we can get everybody that in here to get their response out. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to kick it off now. Mr. Campbell, he is our county engineer. He's got some slides he wants to show you, and then he'll do some explaining. And, but, and at the end, I will open it up for everybody to ask questions, anything you want to talk about. Good afternoon. Um, I've got some pictures and I'll just start by kind of giving a summary of, of what um, what the whole county is dealing with as far as damage goes. Hopefully explain a little bit about the steps we've taken thus far and kind of where we're heading in the future. It's going to be really hard to see the pictures and probably to hear the conversation down on the far end. If, if you all want to gather around uh, closer, you're welcome to do that and we can have maybe a, a closer discussion or a uh, more frank discussion about some of this. As I go, I, we can answer, I can answer questions or I can go through this and then we can kind of drill down to 93 in particular if that seems to be most of the concern. Um, okay. Let me, let me mention too as we go, I think we can have a more productive conversation and dialogue if we're orderly, okay? So, um, I'll do my very best to answer questions and give you everything I can tell you about whatever it is, but it's, it's going to have to be in an orderly fashion or, or there's not going to be a productive conversation, okay? Uh, are there any questions before we start? So this, this was the slide that was taken. A lot of the damage photos you'll see were taken pretty soon after everything occurred in February. Uh, there was some drone footage we gathered prior to FEMA coming in. And so I'll start, I'll start with those and start working through them. This is no particular order. Um, but there's, I will start by saying there's four major slides in the county. Uh, we'll go through each one of those and I'll, I'll show some information. I'll show some information on each one of those. Um, and then maybe we can get drilled down to 93 by before the end of this and hopefully answer some questions, okay? Uh, so this, this first, uh, the first photos are County Road 189, Summer House Mountain. Thank you. 
Okay. Bear with me a second. Okay, so Summerhouse Mountain, uh, you can see, can you see, can anybody see that? Yeah. All right, um, there's about 350 feet of roadway damage. The head scar is, it took up both lanes. We were able to widen into the mountain. Uh, just being mindful, this, this is the only way up and down for the folks that occupy that mountain. There's 15, 20 houses up that way. Uh, so trying to maintain a lane was our primary goal for them to be able to get up and down while we're through the inspection, site inspection process, site visits with FEMA. More shots, aerial photos of 189. The drainage structure that you see in the foreground, that was what was in place when the, uh, when the slide dropped and so it sacrificed that drainage structure, one of the first priorities was in addition to popping the ditch where we could move the roadway over, was installing a drainage structure to hopefully keep that surface water mitigated. It's more photos, this is the same side looking down the mountain now. This area like, like several, uh, like several in the county on state routes and county routes, has moved for years. There's been movement at this location. It had been repaired previously uh, before this main event in February. 93 and Bryant. So, so this is the upper section, if you're, those of you that are familiar with it, the area. The drainage, there's a large, fairly large pond on top of the mountain that lines up with this top portion of the slide, along with some drainage structures in front of the white truck that you can't see. So this is where the first part of the movement began. You can't see the total head scarf, but it continues out of the foreground in the picture you're viewing. The middle section, there's actually three sections of this mountain that have slid. But this is a view, this is a view of the middle section. There's a crack before the lower section, but we're calling it three main portions. Again, the head scarf is not easily identifiable, probably in the picture you're looking at, but it traverses the, the downhill shoulder and goes out of view uh, for some distance. This is another shot of the middle looking down, up looking down the mountain. Same shot, same area of the slide, the middle section. You can see, uh, this was early on, it actually, it actually moved more later, but this is that middle section where the largest differentiation in the ground surface is. You can see a shot there of the mass. If anyone's tried to drive up through there, this is probably where you encounter the biggest problem. And then lastly is the lower section. So the hairpin that's at the very bottom, it's really hard to see the scarf in this photo because the drone's so high. But at the shoulder, the scarf begins at the shoulder of the curve and then goes in the foreground of the picture you're looking at for quite some distance. Upon, upon closer inspection, you can kind of see the size of that lower one there. Now, this, this really don't do it justice. You can't see all of the downslope, but it, it's a really large, pronounced slide where some of the others are. It's, it's a mass movement, but not a traditional slide like we see most of. County Road 38, Langston Gap. Um, this is probably the largest detour slide we have. From Dutton to South Saudi, Langston, all those areas. This, this mountain gap was the main cut through to, you know, the other option is all the way down Langston Road and then up Highway 35. 
this is another area, like Summer House, that has had creep over the years. It's been repaired by a number of different methods. But this February event really caused, really caused it to turn loose. So it's a switchback, and it's an upper and lower, and they're both in line with each other. You're looking at the upper scarf now that they took most of one lane, the side of the mountain, and you can notice, if you'll notice, you can barely see that lower road. So what you're not seeing is a hairpin turn there where this top is slid down, massive slid down. There's a drone footage, same slide, just the other view. Looking down, you can see more of the hairpin now that's just out of view in the foreground. Same part. Here's the, it's really a two part, but it's kind of a three, like 93. This is really the lower section, but the lower section is a large mass. It's just a lot shallower seated failure than that upper. So the, the upper is a lot deeper, more concentrated. This lower is broader and quite a bit shallower. So there's two portions to this lower. They're close together. They line up. You're on the bottom side of that hairpin now in this view, and you're right below the upper slide. County Road 17. So 17 is different than all the slides you've just seen. Those are the three slides that will be eligible for federal labor reimbursement. County Road 17 is a federal aid route, so most of the county's dollars that we receive for resurfacing can be applied to federal aid routes. They're higher traffic, they are major minor collectors is the classification, classification given by ALDOT, but it's given that mostly because of the traffic volume. So it's our major roads, and it's, it only makes up about 20% of the road network, but it is what is eligible for most of the funds we have for resurfacing. So, unlike local roads, like 93. So 17 has also had movement over the, over the course of years. And uh, you can see there where it, it had been previously leveled. And the, the leveling is right in the failure area that occurred in February. It's, this, is all, this is all one continuous slide. It's near 500 feet long. It's the largest slide by far and the deepest. So we'll look at some more photos, uh, but this, you can't really see the relief in the lower section in this one. This gives you some indication, this is a drainage structure, and uh, a drainage structure, drainage area, I should say, there's no structure in place, but there's a spring that exits this flat in the mountain just below. That's about a 100 foot front slope that's not obvious in this picture either. That it's really worsened since then, um, since this photo was taken. But that gives you some idea of the the area of the failure. Now there's another one behind that where there's relief also that you can't see. It's blocked by the view in this photo. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of try to explain quickly and I'll do the best I can on how I understand slides and and how what best what makes the best sense to me in, in my experience with dealing with road work and slides. Um, so if, if you look at this picture, I don't know if the colors show up, but there's a green line that's dotted. Can you, can you all see that? And then the black line, it would be like present, the present ground prior to disturbance. The green line is after the failure, after the slide. Although it's not really shaped like a lot of these slides you've seen in the photo, this is typical slide behavior of instability in the slope. So you have a head start, and you can see that labeled at the beginning. Then you have where, where the mass is transferred, there's a shift, there's a drop down, and then there's a bulge at the toe, okay? Now, a lot of times field survey after this, it'll give us a lot of indications about a slide and about what we're facing on repair. For example, when we see that toe bulge and we see the toe and the transfer material, that's usually a pretty good indication at the depth. And when I say depth, I'm talking about the depth of this failure plane. We'll talk a little more about that later, but that's really going to be a deciding factor in what a slide costs, the complexity of repair, and how you even go about fixing something like as 
the size of what you see in the pictures, but also just a traditional slide. So just notice the shape and dimensions, and mo most importantly is that failure zone. This is, this is basically the same thing, okay? Except you can see a larger translocation, and this is, this is a deep slide, traditional deep slide versus the other, which is a traditional shallow or, or just a traditional slide. So you see a much deeper seated failure area, a bowl, but it's not necessarily indicative of the depth, right? It's really got that deep semicircle failure zone uh, in this one. But everything means the same. The green is where the land is now. The black is where it was before. So when we, like, at the onset of this disaster, when we go out and we know we're going to have to have estimates, we know we're going to have to have photos, we know we're going to have to do some emergency work that's not slide related because this was a county-wide event, right? So we had drainage structures that were blown out, driveways, parts of roads. Uh, you know, drop-offs at the edge of pavement. You can imagine from all the water going all over the county, all the issues that, that would arise. So that was first task of fixing all the things that we could fix. Meanwhile, while that's going on, it was our job to also estimate and try to quantify the dollar amounts and what we're looking at damage-wise. So what we think it's gonna fix and how we would fix it if we could go out there and fix it right now. So. When we, as a road department, look at that, then we have to think about the methods that we have that we can do the work with. And that method is remove and replace, or traditional slide repair. So you've seen it, a local example for you, 73, right? And that's also a local example of a road that was fixed and it slid and it was fixed and it slid. It's, it's not likely, I was with DOT for 13 years prior to the county, so it's, it's not likely that those folks didn't know that they weren't fixing that slide, and I'll explain more about it later, it's more likely that they knew the magnitude of the depth of that failure area and what it was going to take to actually remove that amount of material and fix it. So it becomes a budget issue. So oftentimes, things are fixed temporarily because it's, you know, it's drier now. What are the chances of an event like February occurring again? But sooner or later, it's, you know, the big one's coming, right? If, once that failure area is there, that green line you saw, once it's created, it's like an injury that needs surgery. It, it's never going to heal on its own. You're not going to fix it without intercepting that layer. It, it may sit there. It may sit there a few more years. You may level it up like you've seen in multiple slides I've shown. It's been leveled up over the years. But sooner or later, there's going to be a trigger to get in that failure zone and then the, the land mass that's there is going to give way. Most always that trigger is water. So, back to, back to where I was headed with that. Our method of estimating for payment purposes and for decision purposes is excavating to remove and replace. So, this is not a good picture, probably for all of you back there, but this is how we would repair a slide. This is a traditional slide repair. This is the way 73 was repaired. Uh, 146, uh, State Route 146. First step is to establish that failure plane, or to the best, to the best knowledge you can with subsurface investigation, establish the failure plane on how deep you have to go, how far back you have to go to intercept that, so that hopefully the repair will stabilize the landmass. And the method of doing that in this picture, it was determined that all the way into the road at that angle would get the failure plane that's there. And most often times there's groundwater, there's groundwater that enters this equation. There's surface water that enters the equation. Uh, one, common, one common denominator on all the slides you saw in the photos is it's, it's a major drainage area in the mountain, okay? So water's concentrated there. Most of them actually have a pond that's on top, uh, so the top is even draining into that area. So it's always water, and one way of dealing with the water is excavating that out, intercepting that groundwater that's pouring out in the surface water, and refilling with crushed limestone. That may be riprap, may be blast rock, surge stone, but a crushed stone on top of a filter fabric and refilling that up so that it's a porous media where the water pressure can drain. You've removed the soil that's saturated and you've got a solid mass in place that hopefully stays put. So in our estimating purposes, I mention all this because this is the way 
if we go fix the slide, this is the way we have to do it, and this is the way we have to think as far as estimating. When you talk about slides as big as you've just seen, as many as you've just seen, and you think about excavating all that out, the, the unclassified excavation to remove that material, the cost of the limestone and the trucking, and the equipment cost to get all the old out, the new in, then other things start to enter in the equation. And by other things, I mean stabilizing in place. So I mentioned that water's always an issue, right? It's always in there and it's usually always the trigger. If you figure out a way to deal with that water, oftentimes the mass that's there that's shifted can be stabilized in place. Now, this requires specialized equipment. It requires a geo hazard mitigation contractor that basically this is the only type of work that they do. But when you start talking about a slide, it's $2.6 million like County Road 17, then it really behooves you to explore all the different ways and make sure before we set into digging in this thing for a month or trying to produce a set of plans that would be digging in this thing for a month, that we've, that we've looked at the cost to stabilize in place and what are our guarantees and factors of safety and option when it comes to that. So this is one method, and this is a, this is a, shallow, a shallow slide that's shown, but it's a good illustration in what can be done. So the yellow is surface water, and in this illustration they've been able to seal that surface water and get it past their side. And they've had a shallow failure that's been pinned. So this, this may be accomplished by piles or micro piles, soil nails. And this is a vertical, this is a vertical application, but what what we've used in this county more often than, than that is a horizontal application. Matter of fact, a local example for you would be uh, the interchanges at Bridgeport. Anybody remember the failures on the side of 72? And the uh, the soil nails and rock bolts that went into that face. So that was that was an example, and this is an illustration of that. So you can see the failure area there. So that failure plane still exists, right? And it's that injury that requires surgery. But instead of removing this huge mass of material that we're going to have to truck all over and fill in with rock, now maybe it makes sense dollar-wise to come in and stabilize this. The rock ball, to anchor in the stable, stable structure behind it, whether that be bedrock or collapsed cab rock or something that's determined from geotechnical information that is stable enough to hold this mass. And these are modeled in a computer uh, by people that do this type of So in this example, it's pinned, okay? These are soil nails or rock bolts, and it's anchoring that mass, and then the repair is made on top, and you're having a road. That's all the photos I have for you. So now, now I want to kind of try to explain where, where we're at and why we're there. So, in all the slides you saw, County Road 17 is not a FEMA site, right? So it's eligible for emergency relief for the Federal Highway Administration. That means once we have an agreement with the state, it's much like doing a federal aid resurfacing route on a major collector like we talked about. The state has the money. As long as we satisfy their requirements, we can hire a contractor to do the work, satisfy the bid laws obviously, Hire a contractor to do the work, and those reimbursements can come back in a timely manner. In a timely manner, meaning monthly or not much delays past monthly is what we would anticipate. Now, when it comes to FEMA, I'm not here to bash FEMA. Uh, if it wasn't for FEMA, I don't know what we would do, but it's a much longer process, okay? I'll give you an example. A couple of months ago, maybe three now, I don't know exactly, we received our final check from the 2015 floods. And I'll give you a local example of the 2015 floods. Y'all remember County Road 290 Bridge? We stayed out for 10, 11 months. That was a FEMA project, except we did it in-house. We, we were able to repair that in-house and reconstruct that bridge. And we just now received final payment from that along with the other projects. There was a mountain slide in that disaster also. So anyway, where I'm headed with this is FEMA is a FEMA is a longer process in return on money spent. So, if we are to go out 
and have a plan on all these. Uh, let's say we have all our geotechnical work on these three FEMA sites. We want to get contractors breaking ground and we want to make stuff happen. For us to put a contractor to work, we have to be able to pay them every month. Okay, that's, that's about $6 million total on all that stuff you just saw by our estimates of digging that big hole on what it would take to do it. So to be able to cash flow those kind of repairs on a monthly amount is going to take a lot of money that we don't have. So, the, and, and this is subject to change. Uh, you know, I, I, I do what I'm told, okay? Uh, and I try to give them the best advice just like I'm standing here trying to give you the best information I can. County Road 17, we feel like we can get that money back faster. So we started geotechnical work. We started investigating, estimating, all the stuff we could do, that started after this event happened. But we started geotechnical investigation. That's geophysical and geotechnical. Because these geo mitigation hazard contractors, when they come out and look at these sites, these sites are massive. You know, this is not something that occurs every blue moon. This is, this is unprecedented. So when they come out and see it, they're like, whoa, I don't know, I don't, I can't give you a proposal on this until I have the works. So the works means basically an MRI is the way I can understand it, an MRI of what's under the ground to a certain depth, and then uh, electronic resistivity tomography. So it's another MRI of the ground basically. They pair that with geotechnical work, so that means pouring getting some field data to calibrate this with, and then uh, some, some lab testing of the samples they take from those cores, and then they look at a stability analysis. So one of the, one of the schools of thoughts when, when the, both of those contractors looked at 17 is, I don't know that this is a traditional slide, I think you may have more of a karst formation or a sink. Well, it's not unlikely to encounter a cave in Jackson County, right? So. I mean, they, they see this every day, they do it every day, they know more, what, way more about this stuff than us. So that was another thing that brought on the geophysical work. Fast forward to now, the geotechnical work is mostly complete. We expect a geotechnical report on 17 any day. We'll be able to take that and solicit competitive proposals. Notice, I didn't say put it out for bid, I said solicit competitive proposals because in order to put something out for bid, then you have to understand the problem. You have to understand the problem before you can develop a set of plans. With these complex slides, these contractors most likely understand the problem way better than we do. So, competitive proposals would, would allow the contractor to use whatever method that they specialize in. So the soil nails, the rock bolts that you saw an example of, may be one contractor specialty. He may feel comfortable about the repair with that. Another one may be anchor, pile and anchor, or uh, pressure grouting, concrete columns in there, pins, who knows? But anyway, the competitive proposals allow some flexibility with a repair and hopefully a better value for repair. So that's County Road 17 and why we're working on it now. Next will most likely be County Road 189. For the, for the reason mentioned about the, it's the only way up and down, for the people that live there. Um, 93, 93 would most likely be next. Um, so you know, it will after that, eventually. Yes, yes. And then County Road 38 would be last. And and the reason on that County Road, even though County Road 38 is a longer detour, we're not absolutely sure that a realignment uh, wouldn't be more feasible and just to get rid of that switchback that's there. The, the topography lends itself to a realignment in that area and the damage is not is near near as bad on 38 so i don't know what will shake out you know on that fema wants to see cost benefit analysis you know you're spending federal aid money and you're receiving federal aid dollars so you really have to turn over all, all the stones on showing yeah you can spend your money on this switchback and we can go spend a million dollars repairing these two slides but it may slide again and we could spend seven hundred fifty thousand and put a brand new road for some distance over here. So that's that's kind of a, that's quick, okay? That's kind of a breakdown on the thought process and what's led us to where we are. But just being honest with you, I, you know, the, the bank accounts are all open record. Any of the, the administrators here, and, and you're welcome to see it all. Um, 
it's going to have to go one at a time for the simple cash flow process. We think we can get our money back out of 17. The, the repair work I spoke about, about the drainage structures, the shoulder drop-offs, the washouts, all that work is complete. All that work as of last week, end of last week, was submitted into FEMA. So it's, it goes to Denton, Texas, and it's in a review process. And hopefully that cash flow will start turning around. That's not a lot of money, but it's a few hundred thousand. So we couple that with some cash flow coming back from 17, we may be able to take on 189. And once we get underway with that and we're able to cash flow and afford a contractor, we may be, be able to turn our attention to geotechnical work on 93 and start doing some of those preliminary stages on working on that. So that's kind of the that's kind of the rundown. Yes, sir. Yeah, it, it'll likely be years. Honestly. But his question was, what happens when uh, beyond 73? Yeah, so the Tennessee route by 73, it, it likely could slide. I know there's been movement there for years. But I, I can almost assure you T-Dot has a lot more money than Jackson County. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. What about the uh, Tennessee route that is going to be closed So by August 31st, did everybody hear the question? Uh, she yeah. asked, what about the new gas taxes passed? Y'all seen that? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't started. It ain't started yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let, uh, let's go one at a time. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna answer a question. So August 31st, the county had a deadline to submit priorities. Uh, it's part of the law that they want uh, clarity in what our priorities are. They want to post it for the public, for public input, etc. So Jackson County, what it'll boil down to is it, it to it right about 10 cents, but it starts out at 6, 8, and 10, right? So it's going to amount to about $600,000 will be what we could expect the first year of the gas tax. Then 800 the next, then just shy of 1 million the next. So, yeah, this, well, it's the road work. This is, now, this has been supplemental to the federal light dollar okay? So, if you think about the major roads, the major collectors, that's already funded a little, 500000 But this is an addition to that. This is the new tax rate. So, the first year, it's going to amount to about $600,000. And we were working on this today on priorities because the deadline approaches. What we try to do on that is develop a short list for them to see and cheese them. So over the course of the years there's local roads, there's roads that are paid with SC money, and that is state money. And that's a local road that has a lot of traffic, but it's not a major road like that. So those roads were paid with I don't I don't know if they want to direct my views here, but SC money directed by politics rest of paper. So those major traffic local roads can be chosen. Uh, and I, I can think of a lot of people who are like 